I made this model of a club foot to demonstrate the proper manipulation to correct the deformity. Counter pressure is applied with the thumb over the lateral aspect of the talus, while the mid and forefoot in supination are gradually abducted. As the calcaneus abducts, it diverts and slides laterally to its normal position under the talus. The club foot cannot be corrected when counter pressure is applied to the calcaneo area because it prevents the calcaneus from abducting, in turn blocking the abduction of the whole midfoot. Complete correction of the club foot requires severe abduction of the midfoot and forefoot to stretch the tight medial tarsal ligaments. From the back we see that without touching the heel, when the foot and calcaneus are abducted, the heel evolves into valgus or into the curvature profiles of the subtalar joint surfaces. A three-day-old baby with bilateral congenital club feet. The feet are in severe supination and abduction. The hills are in Varus and Equinus. There is some cavus. The cavus is corrected by supinating the forefoot. The foot abduction is corrected by abducting the forefoot in supination while counter pressure is applied over the lateral aspect of the head of the talus. A thin cotton bandage is applied tidily over the foot and lightly over the calf. The correction is maintained while the cotton is applied. A plaster bandage is applied over my fingers to prevent crowding the baby's toes. The plaster is well molded. My thumb changes position often to prevent pressure source over the head of the talus. The heel is well molded. The cast is extended to the upper thigh. Similar plaster cast is applied to the right foot. The first cast maintained the feet in supination and equinus. Five days later, the casts are removed. The feet are manipulated again. New plaster casts are applied. The forefoot in supination is abducted to the neutral position. The correction is maintained while the cotton is applied.
the foot and heel are well molded. The plaster cast is extended to the thigh. The plaster cast is applied to the right foot. The foot and heel are well molded. My thumb over the lateral aspect of the head of the talus changes position often. The completed second plaster cast maintained the feet in equinus, in supination, and in minimal adduction. The plaster over the toes is trimmed off. The heel rarus is improved. Seven days later, the second casts are removed. The feet are manipulated again. The forefoot is abduction in some supination, while counter pressure is applied with the thumb over the head of the talus. A new plaster cast is applied to the left foot. The heel and malleoli are well molded. The sole of the foot is well molded. The foot is abducted. The plaster cast is applied to the right foot. The foot is abducted without ex externally rotating the leg. The third plaster cast maintained the feet in aquinas, in some supination and some abduction. When the third casts are removed, the feet are manipulated again. The forefoot is abducted in minimal supination. In the completed fourth cast, the feet are in about 30 degrees of abduction, in minimal supination, and in about 20 degrees of equinus. Seven days later, the fourth casts are removed. All the components of the clubfoot deformity are corrected, except for the equinus. The heel cords are tied. Under the skin anesthesia, the heel cords are severed subcutaneously to correct the equinus. New plaster casts are applied, 
holding the feet in 70 degrees of abduction and 15 degrees of dorsiflexion. The feet must never be pronated, nor the heels pushed into valgus. Three weeks later, the fifth cast are removed. The feet are well corrected. A foot abduction orthosis is worn for three months. At four months of age, 